Hey guys, welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Oakley. Andrew and I don't leave home without our beautiful new Oakley prism lenses, and nor should you. Uh, make sure that you're going out and doing whatever you're doing, whether you're playing golf, you're watching a game, you're going to work, you're doing anything. When you leave the day, it's a, it's a much brighter day when you have the prism lenses and the prism technology from Oakley. Andrew, welcome back, my man. We got a uh, we got a new human being in the world. Why don't you uh, let's not bury the lead here because you know after after last after last show it was kind of a shit show. We self admitted we all uh, were were sitting there after um, the sweep in Boston uh, and just like puzzled honestly because it was such a bad freaking it was such a terrible terrible weekend of baseball um, that uh that yeah really what i was looking forward to was uh was the new baby so why don't you tell tell everybody about it well yeah well first i was good to be back i was wearing my oakley sunglasses in the operating room on monday oh, good just to make sure no shrapnel got in my eyes uh yes my i had a baby girl it was a surprise up until the very end had a baby girl named lucy um we got home from the hospital thursday afternoon so thursday night was the first night with harrison and Lucy in the house and it, it, it went well. They came to visit us in Harrison came to visit us in the hospital. So he had already met his baby sister, but I, I didn't really get to see many of the games this week because the Wi-Fi at the hospital was less than stellar. I was like trying to watch the game. Do you remember back in like 2000? So when I first went to college, 2006, like the early days of MLB TV, I remember streaming games and just like seven of the nine innings were just complete blurs, just fuzz. That's what it was like. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm just going to follow the game on game time. Yeah, there was like a three-minute uh, delay too back then. It was uh, it was yeah, really tough every... to live tweet a game when you have a three-minute delay <laughs> trying to yeah. watch the game. And like every pitch, it was just like freezing. Them. I was like, this is just not enjoyable. So Thursday night was going to be my first night to watch a Yankees yeah, welcome, baseball game. Welcome back. After, <laughs> welcome back. After I got Harrison to sleep. I got Harrison to sleep just after 8 p.m., mm -hmm. I throw the game on yep. and it is eight to nothing. Yes, it is. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm shutting this shit off. I'll see you tomorrow, boys. Man, what a welcome back. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't great for you. That's and that's unfortunate. Domingo Herman with a another consecutive just complete shit show as a of a, of a pitcher. I mean, it's like a it's don't even show up. I mean, at this point, for real, I'm not even joking. If you're gonna come up and do that. Let's just flip it and have IKF start the game. That way, <laughs> that way we uh, we at least you know are saving Ooh, IKF some opener. IKF, IKF opener. IKF opener. Now we're talking. I like it. Now we're talking. Yeah, yeah we got a regular Shohei Otani on our hands with uh, with IKF uh, coming in and uh, and pitching the ninth and then hitting a hitting a dinger. Um, so the the guy literally does everything. And uh, well, can Shohei Otani play short? Oh wait, IKF can't play shortstop either. Never mind. Sorry. Well, he could. They're just not asking him to do it. That's it. You know, they're just not asking him to do it. Right, Logan? They're not asking him to do that thing. So it's it's fine. No, but you, you picked a bad I think game. He asked not to do it. You picked a, I think he you picked a bad it. game to come back to. The the two before that were were much better and, and actually some positive things to talk about, uh, specifically Garrett Cole, who I thought was really, really good um, and showed that emotion that that I love the body language. Give me some positive body language. Give me some give me some F you, uh, you know. So swag on on the mound and that's really what he had so that that made me very happy um even though it's a struggling seattle mariners offense until domingo herman uh, picked up the mound without anything sticky the um you know, who knows what whatever herman is, is or is not putting on his hands has not been working the last two starts the cole thing that you mentioned that was great to see absolutely loved it uncharacteristic for cole though normally he's not going to do that because uh, he's been a guy and we've criticized him for this, that if some, you can get in his head, like if someone does something out of the ordinary, and I'm sure that's why the Mariners were stepping out of the box there to try and delay him because they know if you break up Cole's rhythm, he might crumble. Like, don't you think he might have that reputation where if things are not going to his liking, he's, he's going to make a bad pitch maybe. Yeah. So I think the, the situation is different because of who's doing it. Right. So if like uh, the Seattle Mariners are intentionally trying to rattle him by stepping out of the box or doing doing a particular thing, like I I think that is the type of, uh, of thing that he's like, no, like that that doesn't bother me. He gives up a home run that might bother him. The 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 schedule of of the day uh, that is, you know, an arbitrary schedule that 
the the PA announcer gets in the way, like he's going to get mad at that. And and that could throw him off because his routine is off. But I think when the competition is doing something to intentionally exactly what you're saying, I feel like he's smart enough to understand that that's what's happening. And he flips that into motivation. And that's what I saw. I saw a guy that was like, yeah, good try, you know, good effort. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you doing that thing. All you did was fire me up a little. And, and, and then visibly, you know, it's funny. I thought he was, I thought he was at first, I thought he was wagging his finger, shaking his finger um, at the players, but, but no, it was, it was Scott service who was doing something similar and he was just doing the old man thing back to the old man on the sideline and even had the face like, no, you do you know, like, like a, it's like Remember the, the Babu, the Babu yeah, yeah, and yeah, Seinfeld, yeah. <laughs> many, many bad men. But his, his was even just like, you know, like, like how, how dare you like, don't do that thing. And uh, you know, I, Kemp is five years old and he does this like annoying voice at times where he goes rah, rah, rah. it's like it's like annoying five-year-old thing and that's exactly what it looked like he was doing so i think he was uh he was getting some motivation from uh from his from his kids at that point too but i loved it because you know what it was the, the thing that i loved more actually was the the um the the thing he did on the mound with the the high fastball now it wasn't close. It wasn't. He didn't throw it at anybody's head. He didn't throw it any, behind no, anybody. No, it was laugh. It, it was it was exaggerated to the screen to make a point. Right. It was not buzzing the tower of anybody. This is I'm going to throw it up to Susan and John up in the booth. Yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't get that high because as as we know, John just stays the course. But the um, if he did, he did. Fl- he he threw one to the backstop, very very intentionally. Uh, but then he, but then what he did is he he uh he hit the black on the outside of the corner um to uh you know for the strikeout so like it was completely effective in what he wanted to do uh and it was a beautiful thing so yeah i think he showed some uh some competitiveness and a little bit of pissed offness in the game and then afterwards with comments and walking off like there was some extracurricular stuff which i I really did appreciate yeah, after the game, Cole said sometimes a high fastball can really can be a really effective pitch. Got to change the eye level. That's all he was doing. He's just changing the eye level there. Yeah. No, it's funny because uh, I, I I mentioned uh, after Father's Day, I was playing 21 with with uh, some young guys in my family, my nephews. And anytime they would shoot and make a free throw, I would either throw it high back to them or roll it back or do something just like a dickhead move. And it's exactly that. I'm just trying to throw you off your rhythm. I'm just trying to like, don't set your feet in the same place. Don't set your eyes in the same place. Don't set your hands in the same place. Um, and, and even one to the screen, even though it's not like an, a pitch that a batter is going to attempt, they're not going to attempt at that. It, it does. It's, a, it's got a little shock value. And then if you, if you dot an outside fastball uh, on the black, then, you know, everybody's in trouble. Whoever's holding a bat. Well, so the Caballero who was stepping out of Caballero. the, out of the, out of the, is that how you say it's it? fun to say, yeah. Uh, stepping out of the box, taking taking a little stroll. It's something that if you remember when we talked to Jeff Blum in our Astros preview podcast this year, he was talking about how that's the, you know that's a strategy that hitters can employ the fake bug in the eye just to throw the pitcher off their rhythm, and that's not something that you can do as much anymore with the pitch clock. So, Cabby as as um, as the uh, Mariners manager was calling him, he said he's been doing this all season, but you have to you only have eight seconds to do it. So it's like, he's got to really be particular with the time that he's taking. And he's got to like, what I'm trying to say is like, Cole, yeah, it's annoying, but you know, at eight seconds, he's going to be back in there anyway. So there's a timer on it. So it's like, it's not really getting the, so I, how I, much I, is it really throwing him off there? It's eight seconds. Here, just like, here's why I think it was a little different in that exact circumstance. The 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 pitch before was a knuckle curve ball that was high in the zone. It was it was a high called strike, it, but it was high. It was it was a little high. It was a it was a a pitcher's fr- a pitcher friendly call, and I think that Cole took exception because he not only stepped out of the box, but like oh what a terrible call kind of showed up the umpire and showed up cole for that call oh, cole strike. never shows up the umpire yeah, it doesn't matter should have gotten yeah. a strike none of that matters except for the moment when cabby does the does the thing that that, that bothers um that bothers cole so i think it was more so because the called strike on the knuckle curve before and he showed displeasure to that and walked out of the box i think it was a little combination of both to get the buzz and then the easy strikeout for for cole and basically played him uh like a fiddle 
Yeah, no, that, that that was a fun little moment. And Cole pitched great. And and he, the Yankees are now seven and zero after a loss when Cole pitches. And in those starts, Cole has a one eighty seven ERA. So definitely stepping up, being the stopper. And that's what you're looking for, right? We've we've been critical of Cole in the past because of the expectations, because of uh, you know he's the guy that that needs to lead this team. And you know I hope he makes me look stupid in the way that that um, you know I don't believe in him sometimes. I, I want him to shove the bats down their throats. And especially in these moments when you have, when you have a team that's just reeling and struggling, can't score a damn run. Um, you need him to come up and put zeros up, not, not, not a, a quality star. You need him to go up there and dominate and put up zeros to get this team back on track and understand that you're essentially picking up the offense by putting up zeros. And that's what he did. He led with the fastball. He was dominant early in the count. Um, his fastball was really good, high nineties. Um, and he had a lot of good control of it. And, and as you can see, like th that's that guy when, when he's out there, when he's early in the count fastball dominant and, and able to put it where he wants to, you know, the batters have practically no chance at that point. There's a lot of luck that goes into success. I think at the, at the plate against Garrett Cole when he's on. So, um, what do you, what do you make so far of Cole's season? Cause we're, we're now coming up on the end of June and he's been very good in June. We're going to get some numbers in a second. And he was very good to start the season. And he had that really bad stretch in, in the middle there in May so far in June, he's got a one seven, eight ERA and four starts with a two and one record. So it's been like an up and down season. He, he just completely lost it <laughs> for a few starts there in May. Um, but what do you make so far of the season for Cole? Yeah, I think it's that. I think it's I think it's just a, a little bit of up and downs, but for the most part, he's been very good. I mean, started out the season awesome, um, ran into some issues when uh, when when he uh, went down to the trap, gave up his first home run, and then kind of went on a streak of giving up some home runs again, and, and fell back into that little uh, that little that little pocket of uh, of struggle that he likes to get into sometimes. But yeah, he's been he's been dominant again. I, you're going to see the ebb and flow of of a pitcher. You hope that for a guy like Cole, the ebb and flow is just. Uh, they're not very high or, or deep lows and, and, and you're, you're have a more consistent, you know, high end, uh, high end guy. And that's, that's what he looks like. So I'm, I'm look, I'm happy with the way he's been pitching. Obviously when you see that the Yankees are seven and zero with him pitching, um, you know, uh, at that point just to, to be the stopper, that's, that's huge. Like that is a massive stat for me. That is a massive stat because that, that means he understands the gravity of a situation after the, after a Yankees loss, understands his role in the team for coming back and, and having to write the ship. And then does it. So uh, I'm so far been very. He, I think he's been very good. Logan, do his bad starts just in prior seasons tend to happen in clusters? I'm I'm kind of thinking, like, yeah, like he'll have yeah. four out of five bad starts, and then it just makes things seem a lot worse. Because when you have a bad month versus just one bad start once a month for five months, it just optically seems a lot worse because when a guy goes out there three straight starts and struggles that just seems worse overall even though at the end of the season the numbers are going to be the same yeah like last year i remember i'm looking at it now he started off really hot remember he i mean he started off cold really bad rather. yep and then he went on that he went on a run and he pitched uh he got his era down from three five seven uh Nope, that's not true. He got his area down from six three five to two six seven in four starts, and then it went back up to three one twelve for the season three three one three one twelve before going all the way back down to under three for a while. And then he had a little stretch at the end of the season where he he gave up five earned runs to Kansas City, six earned runs in Seattle in back to back starts, and then the start before that he gave. Oh, up. those were the Higgy starts. That's when Higgy was catching. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then he went out, and then Trevino came back, and he pitched seven shutout in Seattle, and then went on another run of good starts. So I don't know if he just needs a start that just propels him, and then he just goes. Yeah, because uh, I mean, I think I it's primarily sort of thinking... for a lot of starting pitchers when they get into you know these these rhythms, and it makes sense. Like it's, I think you see more more so you see clusters of of starts that are either positive or negative with starting pitchers. I guess. But is he a guy that you're like, well, he's got to be good going into the playoffs or else he's going to be bad. Like, that's not something I've thought of Cole in the past. Well, I don't know, because it depends on a lot of things. Like we, we've we've run into him going into the playoffs with a uh, with a balky leg, uh, you know, with injury is different. I understand in, that, but injured, it's, it's a matter of like that is what we've seen. Um, but also knowing who they're playing and has he struggled? And I don't know I, I, until I see I, for me. 
with Cole, it's I'm not looking at the momentum necessarily for him. I just I just need to see it to believe it <laughs> with him at, at more consistently wearing pinstripes because I've seen it in other uniforms and I need to see it in pinstripes for him to go out there and dominate on a more consistent basis in, in high leverage games. But again, I'm not here to bitch about Garrett Cole. Like good, good, positive uh, things coming out of that, and and is a game that they absolutely needed. Because the other the other piece of that, when you're looking at the Seattle Mariners, like they were struggling coming into the series offensively too. So granted, the Yankees have been absolutely struggling offensively, um, but when you have uh, two immovable objects on the on the offensive side, you need something to give, and that's what Garrett Cole did. He did what he exactly what he was supposed to do, and shoved the bats down their throats. Um, so that, that was a good start. And then obviously the, the second game, you know, that was uh, we were looking at Vasquez. Vasquez, I think, deserved a start coming up. It was a matter of them, you know, who lined up for the start, I think, is really what was uh, most important also. But Brito came up and I thought Brito pitched really well. I thought he was he was, uh, you know, from from the the way that the guys were talking about him as well on the on the broadcast, um, the, the picks, the pitch mix that he was coming in with was very different. Like he wasn't showing that, that change up early. He was, he was really coming in and I think being, uh, being unexpected from what the, what the game plan was, uh, that he put on tape in the past. And I think that for a young pitcher the, to be able to do that is one thing or talk about doing that and game plan to do that, going against what you're good at. Um, and then executing that is a very different thing, but he did a really good job came, coming in, mixing it up, giving them different looks. And then, and then going to that change up, you know, a little bit deeper into the start. And I think that gave him a little bit extra to, you know, to get, um, to get deeper into the, into the game, but I thought he pitched really well. Yeah. And some other positives from that second game of the series, uh, Volpe hit a home run and in the seven games since making that stance change, he's hitting 273 with a 906 OPS. I don't know. Is it directly tied to the stance change? It could be. Is it a mental thing? It could be. Is it a confidence thing? It could be. All of the above. D. Yeah. 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 I mean, when you when you change something and then it starts working, you're like, oh, oh, cool. Or even if you yeah. change something or you feel like you've changed something and it's working, like, oh, cool. Like I I looked at, I closed my right eye for half a second before he went and I had a better focus. I, whatever. It just makes him shit up. It's like a um, I was watching uh, Tin Cup the other day where the caddy Romeo, I don't know if you remember that movie where he's like, where he's got the yips when Kevin I Costner. I haven't seen that in so long. Kevin Costner has the yips and, and uh, his caddy, who's Cheech, is um he's like uh you know put your hat on backwards put your put your tea in your left ear take your take your stuff out of your left pocket and put it in your right pocket Do whatever just change your mindset yeah to, like get your mind off of the thing that you're struggling with and then at that point you can free your mind and your and your talent just kind of takes over and your body goes there i think that's part of it um but yeah the the confidence level that 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 he can he could stay closed um is uh, is important for him is the yips a golf term or a baseball term? I always thought it was a baseball term. Is that a golf I term? I think it's too? originally, I think we know it from baseball because of Chuck Knobloch, but I don't think it happens very often in baseball. It happens all the time in golf. Uh, no, uh, yeah. Jose Altuve got the yips a couple years ago. Yeah, but it's it's a lot more infrequent, I would say, for a guy to, to forget how to throw a freaking ball than all of the things. Uh, I get the yips every single time I play golf. Isn't that... Isn't that what bad golfers are? No, you're just bad at golf. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to be good at something to have the yips. You can't be bad and ha- you see, oh, it's just the yips. My slice, yeah, that's the, that's the yips. I've right never there. not. I've never like unlearned how to throw a ball. I, Quadruple I don't bogey, that. yeah, it's the yips. Yeah, I don't understand how you forget to throw a baseball. I, like that's still. I don't quite. I still don't understand how Chuck Knobloch couldn't throw the freaking ball. I still don't understand it. Mental man, mental yips. Okay, so apparently it's originated as a golf term. Yeah, I mean Um, that's that's where I originally knew it from until Chuck Knobloch entered my life. I would say the yips is more in your short game than your you know off the tee or long irons. Like I would feel like wedges and stuff. Like you can get in your head a lot more. I I went through a period. Not that I'm good at golf, but yeah, qualifier also bad golfer. But like, you know, it's like I would literally just not be able to chip a ball in the air. That's how that's how bad it was for a period of time because I was just completely in my own head. I think the yips are are related to something that's that's um, more of a simple movement, something that's a little, you know, that, yeah. that you're like, I can't believe I can't do this right now. Uh, I'm mentally blocked. It's a very simple thing, like throwing a baseball from second base to first base. It's it's. Uh, oh, wow. This is good. This is good stuff. Ilya. So apparently the yips is a term that came from. Quote, you idiot, putt straight. Why IPS? Oh, I like that. Yeah, because putting, That's awesome. there's nothing getting in the way of that. Nothing besides you. Except 
Except the green. <laughs> yeah, but put, the, if you the straight the it, no. Nah, if you just put it straight, you're, you're still you could still put it straight on a sloped green. That is really good trivia. It's like yeah, that's bar trivia right there. Like where what uh, where did the yips originate from? You idiot, putt straight. Remember that. Write that down. Somewhere. I do like that. The fact that you call someone an idiot and then it sticks forever <laughs> into uh into it. It's like uh K I S K I S S. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Stupid. Stupid. Yeah. Stupid. Uh, you had mentioned the Yankees just generally struggling offensively. I did pull some numbers there. But first, if you're going to want to go to a baseball game this weekend, Yankees versus Rangers, you're going to want to do that by buying tickets on game time. The app has a ton of cool features and is easy to use. It shows you trending tickets, what sections the best deals are in. It calls out cheap options and flash deals and much more so you can make an informed purchase. I was just looking at the app this morning. And for Saturday's game, there's a really good deal in section 228, which is third base, left field side, middle level, main level in the stadium is my opinion, the best level in the stadium for your money. And it is forty eight dollars each, all in pricing for two for a pair of tickets. Those those are not going to be there probably by the time you are hearing this. But hey, go check; they might be there. You can go to Saturday's game. Game time even gives you event cancellation protection, so you can buy it with confidence. And you get images of your seats before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect. It's a super fast buying process. It's just two taps, and you're done. And the tickets go directly to your phone, so you don't have to dig through your email to find them. Snag tickets without stress with Game Time by downloading the Game Time app, create an account, and use our code Bronx for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Once again, download the app, create an account, code Bronx gets you twenty bucks off your first purchase. Thank you, Game Time, for sponsoring us. Okay. the We've been talking about the Yankees team on base percentage for a couple weeks now. And as a team, they rank tied with Kansas City for second to last place with a 297 on base percentage. They're only five points ahead of the last place team, which is the White Sox. League average is 319. So they are substantially below league average on base percentage. And as a team, they also have a 96 OPS plus, which is 4% or four points worse than league average in OPS plus. It's just been abysmal to watch these. And even in the game that they won on, uh, what was that Wednesday? The middle of the order, Glaber, Rizzo, Donaldson, Bader went over and Higgy went combined 0 for 17. They won the game. Great. They, they got hits from Bowers and McKinney and Volpe. But you got Glaber, Rizzo, Donaldson, Bader, Higgy 0 for 17 in the middle of, in the middle of that lineup there. Yeah, it's been bad. And and then, you know, not included in that when you're looking at uh, what Stanton's been doing or not doing uh, since since coming back, you're, you're talking about a, a massive glaring hole. And I know we're going to hit on this in a little bit. Uh, I test nerd test just looking at what the what that delta is from from judge being uh, being absent in right field specifically and, and like what that replacement looks like. Uh, you know, when you, when you see Stanton who, who, uh, who ended up playing the field last night, a little bit for anybody who did watch, uh, beyond the second inning, um, he, he's been so bad and he's been talking about it out in the public, you know, just like he does at, you know, talking about, you know, you, 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 all the right things, saying the things you got to make adjustments, can't get frustrated, all these things, but we're frustrated as a fan. We're frustrated. We're frustrated watching him step up to the box and, and look completely lost because that's what he's doing right now. Uh, and, and he needs to be the big bat in the lineup. He needs to be. And he's, and when everybody, uh, when everybody has to pick him up, it adds more pressure to the lineup and, and we're seeing what, what, what's happening because Rizzo hasn't been great either. Stanton's hitting 190 on the season and he's 073 in his uh, last stretch of games. Uh, it, it's just been awful. I, Logan, I know you pulled some sound from, I want to play in a second, uh, Hal Steinbrenner's interview on Michael K because he was talking about this. But yeah, what were you going to say, Scott? I, I just, when you look up and down the lineup and you, and I, and I know that people don't care about batting average as much anymore, but it's crazy how many when you're hitting below 200 you can look at it's batting crazy average. how many people are hitting under 200 i mean it's awful th- that used to be a line in the sand of like you're either a qualified major leaguer or not a qualified major like adam dunn remember the adam dunn re- you know references no we've done this we've done this before yeah adam dunn's batting average was like 260 yeah, and Adam Dunn was the guy that that you were looking at, like, what a piece of shit this guy Hold on. is. We've I, we've definitely looked this up. It was not two sixty, and and it, it was way higher than we all thought. It, uh, his career batting average was two thirty seven. Yeah, I was going to okay. say two thirty was going to be my guess. He hit two sixty in some seasons, though. Like if you look at his prime years, 
what like his his prime years when he was don't look uh, at his prime years look towards the end of the of, of the, the no, latter half of his i think career. you look at the prime years and I, that's what i remember in his okay 240 230 240 but still the point remains he was the worst in the league batting average wise he hit a ton he of started home runs a trend he was the first guy that came in and was like you know what three true options stanton would kill to hit 240 right now oh for sure 100 there are a lot of people that would kill to hit 240 because that would mean you know they're they're, they're not striking out as many times but yes anyway the the um that's what i was gonna say it's frustrating when you see it just like aesthetically when i look and i see a guy every every other guy it feels like is batting under 200 on the new york yankees what are we doing like these are this is this is not what a major league stat uh, line should look like at all well, Hal, Hal Steimer on Michael K show was asked about it, and he said he thinks the team is going to be fine. Quote, these guys are just too good. D- said no one's really on the hot seat right now. And then he was asked about accountability. And I want to play this clip because he said some interesting stuff. But the overall situation, Hal, because we deal with it every single day on the air. Fans unhappy yeah. you have not won a World Series since 2009. You're the New York Yankees and have not had a parade down the Canyon of Heroes going on 14 seasons. But yet, right. Aaron Judge, I mean, excuse me, Aaron Boone, Brian Cashman have gotten extensions during that time. So I guess the overall question is, are you happy with where your team has been over the last six years? And has the mission statement of championship or bust maybe been adjusted? No, it has not been adjusted. Our goal every year is to win a championship. And I've been through this before with numerous people. Do I feel that the whole season is a failure when we don't? Uh, no, I don't, because I'm not going to ignore when we win, you know, X amount of games and win a division and win a division series. I'm not going to ignore that. But we, we have failed for many years to win a championship, and that is our ultimate goal. But, you know, I went through this a lot in the off season. I talked to a lot of you guys. And for all the reasons that I stated, I, I – believe that Boone is a good manager, and I believe that Cashman is a good general manager. And I'm not going to go on all those reasons. reasons again. You can look it up. Uh, there, there are many. But we have failed. You can include me in that as well. Um, you know, my family puts the resources in we can every year, and we strive to feel a championship caliber team. And sooner or later, that's got to result in a championship. And I absolutely understand the frustration with the fans. So, so I get it. We're it, all frustrated. I guess the frustration, and is it a fair question to ask, if you have failed since 2009, there doesn't seem to be any accountability in those failures if the same guys keep coming back to take another kick at the can. Well, I think the accountability is with the fans. I mean, if, if, they, if they've lost confidence in us and, and the way we do things and what we do to try to win a championship every year, they're going to let us know in, in a variety of ways. So I always feel accountable, believe me. But if you're asking me, do I think Brian Cashman is not a good general manager? No, I think he's a good general manager. I've been through the reasons numerous times. We don't need to go through it again. But we have failed to achieve our ultimate goal for many, many years, and that's to win a championship. And we can go through the contributing factors every single year. Uh, we're not going to do that, Give of me a uh, We can go through some of the contributing factors. This it does year sound like Larry David we are. much more than. Uh, but we don't need more. to do that either, unless you guys want. Okay, hold on. So let's stop it there. Um, I think that was the end anyway. So you hear that, everybody? We're do, yeah, we're supposed to not show up. Do, do you hear that? Don't show yeah, up. Don't to go the games. to games anymore. This is like the Oakland the Athletics. The only way, if 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 uh, if you're not happy, stop watching. Stop going to games. Stop watching, stop watching on TV. Stop buying T-shirts. Stop buying food at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Don't go to Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. None of it. Because if according, you know, basically what he's saying is, no, we've been successful over the past 13 years. Because guess what? People still show up in droves, and I make boatloads of money off you people every single season okay i mean it's never going to happen you're never going to have the new york yankees not have people show up so the accountability has to lie in the owner the general manager the manager and the front office and and the players they have to be accountable if you're going to leave it up to the fans to literally not show up to your stadium when you're the most popular franchise in major league baseball you're you're a tourist attraction People go to New York. People fly over from overseas or whatever. They're visiting New York. They're going to see a Yankees game. They're going to see a fucking Mets game. They're going to see a Yankees game. So you're always going to have people showing up to Yankee Stadium. Look, this this pisses me off in multiple ways. First of all, the uh, I got something to, to put on this afterwards too because something that Boone had said um, 
last night as well uh, really bothered me. And, and it's kind of in the same vein here. But I remember back, I think it was, what year are we in? 2023. This was uh, 2018, maybe 2017, when when we had uh, the deal with the Yes Network and we were writing editorial, we had editorial and, and the deal was uh, the editorial that was going on bronxpinstripes.com was going to be used and broadcast on all the yes social channels it was going to be our our all of our guys writing uh and and being distributed on the um on the social channels of of the yes network it was a great deal they had no editorial control that was important for us we had to make sure that there was no editorial control so that we could speak about these things i remember specifically having conversations and i have no problem talking about this at this point specific conversations about the things that we would say or write about if something was, and, and this, this came about, you know, towards the end of the relationship because, because of, 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 for, for a few different reasons, but when you start losing editorial control by the, by the way of, Hey, I'm not going to promote something. If it's within five clicks of a negative, uh, tone on the Yankees, and this is coming like directly from Randy Levine, who's stalking the website, looking for things, clicking on I had a conversation about this with someone that that uh, had a conversation with Randy Levine. Like that was the type of shit that was happening. So the fact that they're saying, and Hal is talking about the fans being the ultimate judgment and the ultimate level of accountability is complete horseshit because we have been and always will be a fan-driven community and a fan-driven website and podcast. We don't get paid by the Yankees or anybody else to talk about this. We talk about this from a fan perspective. We always have, we always will. And if anything were to get in the way, then then we would, uh, you know, eliminate said relationship, which is exactly what happened. And so when I see and hear this, and I know for a fact that that's a lie, that is just bullshit, that that the accountability is on the fans. We try to keep accountable. We try to keep this keep this team accountable by talking about it. And if you're saying that we shouldn't show up to the game or root for the players that we like that have come up through the system because you don't have, uh, you know, the, the 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 strength to hold your own front office and guys in position of manage uh, management and power accountable. It's complete horseshit. It's complete horseshit. The fact that I want to buy a hot dog has nothing to do with you extending Brian Cashman and Aaron Boone based off of completely uh, a bad track record of what they've done. It's horseshit. It's a it's a horseshit statement. It is. And I think also somewhere in the interview, he said that he's not like his dad. And you think that's a good thing because not a lot of people liked his dad. George Steinbrenner ha had, you know, ups and downs throughout his 40 whatever years owning owning the Yankees. I mean, at first, he, he bought the team, he renovated the stadium and he won championships. People loved him. Then he went through the 80s and he, they weren't able to win. And he fired Billy Martin 100 times and he got banned from baseball and people hated him. Then he comes back and he's a little bit older and the team is in the middle of a dynasty and he's building a new stadium and he's getting all the best players through free agency, people loved him again. But if there's one thing that George Steinbrenner was every single year, it was accountable to winning. OK, good or bad, because he made a lot of bad decisions, too, and a lot of things didn't work out. I'm not saying he always made a uh, the right decision, but I can tell you with confidence every decision he made was because he wanted to win a World Series. And he wanted to put a, a championship, an actual championship level team on the on the field for the fans. He did understand that the fans were the ultimate uh, customer for for the ultimate consumer for for what this Yankee baseball. It's the it's the city. It's the fans. It's the people that go in there and watch this team play. Is the ultimate consumer that the 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 level of accountability. We we everybody holds them. I mean, have you do you see social media? You want to you want to not see the accountability? The fans are are absolutely doing that, but you're not responding in the way that we are asking you to respond, or, or that you're not listening to us. And therefore, the accountability is on you. You need to make the decisions. The fans can't make a decision and can't. We can't fire Brian Cash. We can't we make can't any fire personnel decisions. We can just. Ex we can just express our frustration yes. with what we're seeing and what we're watching, and what we're analyzing, not working. And but that doesn't mean I'm not going to buy thing. a Yankee hat Hal and wear Steinberg, a Yankee exactly, hat. Exactly. Hal Steimer does not realize what he's asking for. You want people to not he care. He doesn't know what you want fandom to is. Be, you want people to be apathetic? You think that's what you, you want? Do not want it, it, to make changes? Then they will come back. You do not back. want that. Yeah. You do not want to be the Oakland Athletics. You do not want to be the Miami Marlins. Okay. 
Go ask Derek Jeter how his time in Miami was and how he would have – there would be routinely 75 people in the stands on a Saturday night at Marlins Park. You do not want that Hal Steinbrenner. And that's never going to happen. It's never so going to happen. you're lucky. It's never going to happen because you're the Yankees. But if you're waiting for attendance to drop 40% and people to stop watching on Yes and people stop buying merchandise to then make changes – no, and we're fucking doomed. Yeah, we're doomed because fans, for the most part, are conditioned to live with a team through the ups and downs. That that is what the fans are conditioned. That's what makes winning great. That's what made you stick through the bad times. You. That's why in 2017, when we thought the team, you know, potentially had a chance to win a championship, and it wasn't that long of a downspurt. But like those, those 20, you know, 13 through 16 were not fun, and 2016 was the, the rebuild. And then this 2016 like, this was arguably thing. the most fun second half. The, the, this new thing, 27, and then it's like that that rise up, and it just has gone ever so steadily down since 2019. Down, one step down every single year, and more bullshit being spewed by the general manager and the manager and the owner. And to your point about what uh, Boone said last night after the game asked about Rizzo and Donaldson's errors, and he's just basically, yeah, those are good defenders. What do you want from me? Like, those are flukes, basically. You know, that's just a thing to talk about. Okay, that's something fine. for yeah, us to talk about. Donaldson. That's something for us to talk about. That is what he gave his answer. And thank you for teeing that up because I would have forgotten. What what he said was a response that a fan says. His his that that a, a fan has the uh, the uh, the ability and the right to say. The manager of the team should not be saying that thing. Josh Donaldson, that, that ball was it spinning. It wasn't a difficult ball. Field the ball. He he, he, he then chucked it. the ball to Herman behind Herman's back. Hundred miles per hour. Herman. It was a bad play. It was a bad play. And Donaldson will probably step up and say, "Yeah, it was a bad play." But Boone's not even allowing him to do that because he's coddling him for some freaking reason that that makes no sense. No, hold them accountable in that situation, especially when you're not performing with the bat. You need to perform with the leather. You need to perform in the field to keep the team in a game, especially if there's a if if it's eight nothing or ten nothing at a, at a particular point. You can't just let things get worse and worse and worse because you got to go out there and play the next day. There's a lot of things that if come Boone, in. If Boone, if that was, say, Volpe made a bad play last night, you know, Boone's not going to air out Volpe in, in in that press conference. Fine. But when it's Rizzo and Donaldson, veteran players who can handle their own, he doesn't need to air them out. But how about him saying something along the lines of, yeah, our veteran players who are very good defenders need to just step up and, and make the plays for us to win because we're, we're struggling right now as a team and we can't be making mistakes like that. That's not calling out somebody. That's just saying, yeah, you need to make plays in order to win, especially if you're a veteran. And Hal Strymer has said that, like, we need our veteran players to play better. We need Rizzo and Stanton and Donaldson in the middle of the order to play better. That's obvious. Don't you think those guys know it? Why is it so taboo for the manager to say that? It's not even it, – he doesn't have to pile on them. It's just a level of keeping them accountable and, and making sure and, – and understanding that fans are looking for accountability too and that people who are watching this day, this team day in and day out are looking for accountability. That's what we're looking for. We want accountability. New York fans – we've said this in the past 100 times – they, there's a uh, the comeback story is like the greatest thing, and there will always be a comeback story if someone is held accountable uh, to themselves, and if they are held accountable on the on the team level, there will always be that that the understanding that things go bad, things happen. We understand that, but if you're sitting there and acting like shit don't stink and like it, it's it's uh it's just you know it was just a it was just a thing, it was just a, a whim, it was it was it was the yips, it was whatever. Like no, just own it, move on, own it move on it's like oh yeah it was a fluke just like it's a fluke that the yankees have been playing 500 baseball since the middle half of last season it's just a fluke that the team is not hitting without aaron judge it, it, it's just a fluke that every single year since 2018 this team has regressed it's just a fluke all right let's uh let's move forward with uh with some things the yankees actually did win the series which is a positive note like that's a that's a very good thing right <laughs> doesn't feel that way because it hasn't happened in a while stomped on the last night of the se of the series no well, it hasn't happened in a while the 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 team has been struggling and you know there's some there's some good offense coming into town as well um but the lack of offense which is the 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 biggest piece of what we're looking at and that's where we're going to do this eye test versus nerd test uh brought to you by oakley is the void in right field. The void in right field after Aaron Judge, guys playing that that right field position. I think we all understand it, we all see it, but do we actually know how it's it's uh it's played out in the stats? 
that's the that's the yeah. biggest thing because it's it's pretty uh it's pretty glaring and it was it's it's actually worse than i expected yeah so the yankees um basically what we did here is we pulled numbers for the yankees as a team in right field with and without judge and then numbers for for you know just judge by himself because <clears throat> we have to look at all of that and uh the yankees rank <laughs> without judge 30th in ops that that's last there's 30 teams in major league baseball so 30 out of 30 is last okay they rank 30th in batting average they rank is that last two yeah that's that's last they they rank was it 30th in on base percentage also and then also in last right slugging percentage they rank oh 30th in slugging percentage that's insane that's th so when you look at white right field and and uh you know these numbers you can look at and, and i think this is where the the eye test versus the stat test nerd test comes into play because you're seeing these guys and and a lot of them the bowers uh you know willie calhoun when he was when he was uh not injured uh the guys that are rotating through these different positions they're playing other positions they're not only playing right field but when you look at the delta for right field which is where aaron judge plays to the guys that actually play right field on a given day that that is that is the the key stat to look at is identify what is replacement level for right field uh you know sans aaron judge <clears throat> they're not getting replacement level because when judge is, is there when he's on when judge is on the field you have the best right fielder in baseball and you know atlanta's t uh, team ops in right field is 952 but judge's ops this season is over 1000 so your your delta as you said is Aaron Judge is there or he's not there. When Aaron Judge is there, you have the best production you could possibly find in right field. And when Aaron Judge is not there, you have the worst production in right field that you could possibly find. There is no middle ground. They have not been able to find replacement level offense. They haven't even been able to find slightly below average offense in right field. You go from best to worst. <laughs> and that's just a, that's just a microcosm for how this team is like i've been saying this is on brian cashman you cannot have your entire roster contingent on one player or else you're the los angeles angels who suck and have sucked for a decade plus with all world mike trout talent and now shohei otani who's the biggest best freak we've ever seen on a baseball field since babe ruth you still suck so now are you the yankees without aaron judge you just suck because you don't have your one guy, it's not, that's that ha, that's squarely on roster building. It's it's also on talent evaluation. It's also on on yes, roster building. Talent evaluation goes into that clearly. Um, but making sure that you have right fits, making sure that you have contingency plans, uh, making sure that you have all of those things. Because because when especially in today's game, injuries happen. Injuries are always going to happen. You have to expect them to happen. You have to you have to build in that contingency. And if you don't. Uh, this is this is this is what you're this is what you're getting, and you know what's salt in the wound right now is the fact that Aaron Hicks is over in in Baltimore actually playing well. It just pisses me off because I feel like it's you knew that was gonna you happen. Know you knew it was gonna happen. F him, man. Like you know, <laughs> it's like now he, now he was motivated. He needed that extra motivation that, because you know why his manager never gave him any motivation. Yeah, so. team guy. Like he really knows how to communicate. Um, but. Yeah, that does, that's just salt in the wound when you when you look over and that's actually so that's a, that was a joke that there was like a viral TikTok that went around on how players leave the Yankees, struggle with the Yankees, then go elsewhere and then find it again. Yeah, how about is that the manager like just not being able to get stuff out of guys, not being able to get through to veteran players, young players, anybody? All we heard about Aaron Boone is he's this great communicator and he's going to come in and like these guys are going to they're going to really blossom into their own. That was the number one Gary's reason he got hired. Gary Sanchez just completely devolved as a baseball player, was unplayable behind the plate. Glaber Torres, when he visited when he was first called up, Glaber Torres, when he was first called up, was an all-star just because he was so freaking talented and has regressed every single season. So young players, he's not able to get the most out of. Veteran players, he's not able to get through to. Players who are middle in their career, whatever replacement level players he's not able to to push the right buttons what is he doing for this roster i don't know but he was given a ferrari when he got the job and you guys yeah and he can't drive stick i said that from the beginning you hired someone in the tv booth to 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 come down and manage a team ready to win a world series it's it was asinine i don't think you guys talked about it. so i watched the episode 
um, Monday as Leanne and was recovering and, and Lucy was, was sleeping one off. Um, I was like, I got nothing to do. Let me, let me watch what these guys said about this shit bag Yankees team. I don't think you guys were hard enough on Aaron Boone. Okay. So I have to I, give me two minutes to talk about this last week. The, the, the week they played the Mets Monday was an off day. They played Tuesday, Wednesday against the Mets. Thursday was an off day. The Yankees had a lead in Wednesday's game and they made their big relievers unavailable and they blew that lead. Even though Thursday is a scheduled off day, Tuesday, some of them pitch, but Monday was an off day. And I know they don't like to use three days in a row, but that was an impossibility considering Monday wasn't off. So at most guys are going to pitch two days in a row and then get a day off on Thursday. So everything was going to be fine, right? You don't normally have two off days in a single week in baseball. That's very rare to have. So when you have that, you can use your high leverage relievers more frequently because of those built in off days, but no, they were unavailable. They blew the game. And then Friday, they get their doors blown off, so they didn't need the relievers. Saturday, a rainout, so they didn't need the relievers. And then Sunday, you've got a doubleheader. So already in a doubleheader, you're never going to pitch your guys in back-to-back days. You're only going to pitch them in one. So they're only going to pitch in one of those Sunday games anyway. And then Monday is an off day. I don't know who came up with this plan. I don't know what nerd had this schedule or if Boone had the schedule of their bullpen coach. They came up with this to try and steal extra rest for these guys. Cause you know, that's what they were trying to do. You know, they were trying to get extra rest for these guys. Just like they try and get extra rest for guys when they've got scheduled off days. Oh, we're going to have, we're going to sit judge so we can get the back-to-back off days. or We're going to DH them so we can get the day and a half off, blah, 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 get them off the Tampa turf. And it costs you games. And I understand it was just a June baseball game against the Mets. But then you went into Boston and you got freaking swept, okay? And you looked lifeless. A on June Sunday. a June they baseball quit. game against the Mets is not a not something to to just sho- shove away though either. It's a it, because it's the Mets, it makes it different. They just quit in that Sunday doubleheader. They got an early lead uh, in that first game, and then they just quit against Boston and they got swept. And the the frustrating thing is, I'm extra mad about them just punting a game on a game on a Wednesday in June against the Mets is because he manages the exact same way in the playoffs. They punted game one against Houston last year. And in the middle innings, in the sixth inning of a one, one baseball game, they just said, you know what? Fuck it. We'll get them tomorrow. And then they got swept. You don't know what's going to happen the next day. All you can try and do is win. I'm not suggesting you you pitch guys three days in a row to try and win a June baseball game. But when you already have built in off days, how about pitch your guys to try and win a June baseball game? And then you got a guy like Michael King, proud of Rhode Island or upstate New York, depending on who you ask is uh, coming in five days rest. And just uh, I'm great that he hasn't been pitching well recently, but you can't have a guy like that resting for five days and then, and then, and then coming through uh, asking to execute when, you need him uh, to be in high leverage spots. I'm I'm not that smart. You're not that smart. But even you or I could have managed last week with two off days better than Aaron Boone did. Common sense department just puts that one uh, square in the chat. GPT could have managed better. Well, you know that's interesting. That's interesting because I think that right AI could probably manage this team better, like hands down, than Aaron Boone. It's not even all, well, not all even AI close, is honestly. All AI is going to do is probably just scan Twitter and Reddit, to see what fan diehard fans are saying, and just do that. I think it's good. They've got more human, uh, emotional uh, intelligence than Aaron Boone does, and he's the great communicator. <laughs> I don't get it. So, if we could do an eye test versus nerd test on on Aaron Boone, just to to get some stats to prove that he sucks that would be helpful but thank you to oakley for sponsoring eye test versus nerd test go to oakley.com for more information to find a pair of oakley sunglasses for your needs golf baseball the beach running uh, delivering a baby or whatever it might be thanks to oakley for sponsoring eye test versus nerd test making sure that you don't have any uh any any foreign objects going in during surgery (laughs) Prism technology. I just completely forgot how tiny newborns are because I'm just used to like a beast of a toddler right yeah. now. Harris Harrison's 42 pounds currently, and the new baby was born. Harrison's 42 pounds. pounds. He's he's an animal. He's wearing 4T clothes. Ask how 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 much uh, Kemp weighs. It's probably 42 pounds. 43 pounds. But he's but <laughs> he, he he hits that mark. He hit that mark like a while ago, and he's just he's like stretching out, so it just stays no, at 43 pounds. Harrison is. 
like 99th percentile of everything Golly. and he's 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 in 4t clothes and they're long on him but like he's a bowling ball he, he, he's thick yeah. okay he's a thick boy <laughs> that's awesome um all right, we got some uh, real quick. Let's hammer through some, some some news here. We got we do have some people happening that, uh, that are that are people doing things, which is a good thing. Um, Carlos Rodon is uh, has ma- made his first rehab at start in, in double. I got to say something He's about throwing. Carlos Rodon. He's throwing quickly. the ball in an actual game. The mustache is too much. Okay, it's like it's thicker now than it was. I saw him on the bench the other day. It is a very thick mustache. It's almost—I think he may have put some just for men in there or something because it is like jet black. You can't do that yet. You've got to contribute on the field before you can grow a dumb mustache. That should be a rule. A new amendment to the Yankees' facial hair policy is you can have a mustache, but only when the fans allow you it. Are, when the fans tell you you when can. The fans There's the accountability. It. Exactly. No mustaches. No, no, no thick broom mustaches when you haven't deserved uh, the. You go the out there. Hair. You go out there and you shove against the Rays, you shove against the Blue Jays, you shove against the Orioles, and then you win a couple games. You, you got like a 2.2 ERA after a handful of starts. Yeah, grow a mustache. Fun. We'll all grow mustaches. It'll be fun. You're the Giambino. You want to get grease in your hair and jet black your mustache? You want to hit walk-off dingers to the upper deck? Fine by me. You can't pony up on the IL since you've been signed and grow a mustache. I can't. I can't grow a mustache. do it. I hear. Yeah, I, hear Griffin. Hitting I don't know if he actually it. could grow a mustache, but if he want, if he if he could physically, it would be okay. It would be allowed. We'd allow that. I, I I think that should be a new rule, and that's another thing. Like common sense department. Hey, Carlos, um, you look like an asshole, and if you were pitching well, it would be okay. But since you're on the IL, shave it and then grow it back Just once wait. you start pitching. Read the room, okay? <laughs> read the read the room through that thing. Um. Granted, he's just getting work. Double A, uh, you know, <laughs> forty. It looks looks even more stupid when you're wearing a double A uh, uniform. But <laughs> through forty two pitches, twenty seven uh, first. Have there been any stories about Carlos Rodon like buying the guys like AirPods or anything? Because any, see, I don't like this. Anytime you've got a, a, a in double A, you major mean league baseball? Yeah, whenever you've got a veteran who's made a lot of money rehabbing with with a club, they there's always a story about them like taking them out to a really expensive steak dinner or buying them all AirPods or Apple Watches or something like that. It's like you drop ten thousand dollars because that's a drop in the bucket to you. I think Rizzo did this, didn't Rizzo do this? Of course, Rizzo did it. Rehabbing? Rizzo probably does it every every week. And um, didn't Max Scherzer do this? I think also Scherzer a guy feels this. feels like uh, that he would do it. Someone who I didn't think would do this was David Price. He he did he also did this, I think. He might have even do- – oh, David Price donated his salary yes. to the minor league players. Yes. during COVID. Okay, during COVID. So it's like if there's not a story of Carlos Rodon buying everyone, like new blue scooters, tube, like speakers or something like that, like a couple grand, I'm not I'm, – I don't – mustache, not buying shit for guys who don't make a lot of money. <laughs> I don't like this. Oh, man. Okay. Um you know I'm right. No, yeah, you're not wrong. That's for sure. I don't know. You know, being I, I don't think I'll ever admit that you're right about something. But uh, judge update: Boone said Judge uh, has has uh, no has now advanced to a pool and balanced strength work and could resu- resume throwing and light hitting soon. So we are we are working Did with you some say pool. Wet, yeah, some wet action, some wet action with uh, with Judge, which is good, right? It's good. Oh, it's better because you go. It, it's like when you you wipe, you go dry, wet, dry. So you go, he's going to do dry activities, then he does wet activities, and then finally he'll do the dry activities again before he's ready to play Major League Baseball, which is soaking wet or completely dry, depending on how you look. Oh, at it. it's wet. It's wet. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's good. He's advancing. They're, they're talking about him, you know, walking without feeling pain, stuff like that. So all, all positive things. Uh, you know, I got really nervous when I heard about that second tendon in the foot and, uh, you know talking to dj about the thing and how do we manage that this swing last that night that dj took i keep interrupting you dj struck out and fell over last night did you see that uh he struck out and um it was off after the game was a blow i had it on the ipad i was hate watching because i hadn't watched the game all week i was like i gotta watch something he struck out and he fell over to one knee just completely off balance something's wrong something is very we wrong know something's wrong we don't know what the hell is wrong i mean we assume it's the toe but Clearly, something something's up with him. Um, and then I mentioned this earlier, but uh, and by the way, no, still no timeline, no clarity on the timeline for for Judge. I mean, frankly, where are we? June twenty third. 
I mean, we're yeah. looking after the All Star break. What's the day? I feel like we're still the, looking at the All Star yeah. break. If he's if he's when is the... if he's doing like motion activities at this point, and then he's going to start light swinging, then some wet swinging, some some potential dry swinging. Like this is all okay. It's going to be All Star break, July twenty first, home against Kansas City. Yeah. All right. That's a long way away. Um, Willie Calhoun, as I mentioned earlier, on the 10-day ten, ten IL with a, a, a quad string, he felt something uh, pop when he was running to first base. Um, so pl- uh, platelet-rich Can plasma injection. Can we blame, injection, that? Which we is blame like that on super, Radon? Super, super, uh, the supercharged healing injection that everybody's getting now. What would you say? Can we blame Calhoun's injury on Radon hitting him in the sim game oh, last Very week? possible. I mean, like, very possible. Yeah. Strike three. Carlos. Why is he out there in the smoke in the first and place? Not in a good way. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> You're not showing a lot of a lot of, a lot of moxie and understanding over there. Hey guys, <laughs> guess what? We have um the the Texas Rangers that are uh that are that are gonna be playing the New York Yankees. And they are a very good team now. Don't look now. They rank first in offense. Uh they've got the best team on base percentage they have a they have a ton of studs that that offense is is just uh you know up and down the lineup you see you see you see studs so um they've spent a ton of money in in free agency recently over the last couple of years uh and and yeah they hit the ball so the the matchups that you're looking for on the yankee side are you know whether you like clark schmidt or not he's definitely been pitching a lot better uh i don't i don't hate that as long as he's there but you got severino and cole behind him Huge star for Severino, honestly, like because we still don't know what his deal is. He still hasn't shown that he can go out there and be a quality starter for this team uh, deep into games. And when you're going up against a extremely formidable opponent in the Texas Rangers that are not going to be, um, you know, out there chasing, they're not going to be they're, they're going to be looking for specific things. Uh, it's going to be a very tough matchup. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But the, the Yankees are going to have to figure out how to score some runs against this team because they are going to score runs. Which has not yep. been an easy thing for the Yankees to to do, obviously, uh, as uh, as we as we know. Like, if you're gonna choose a time, veteran players, now would be the time because this is a this is this is a series that, you know, I understand it's it's late June, but it's not. It's it, this is a series that they could easily get swept. They could easily get swept because the Rangers could put up five to seven runs per game, and if they do that, the Yankees are in trouble. So I was just looking up quickly how many runs per game the Yankees have scored. And that can be skewed because you can have blows. They've scored 4.41 runs per game, which is a little bit below league average of 4.55. I would have guessed it's worse just because some of the other metrics like on base percentage, batting average. and You're talking about a season stat though, right? Season stat, the Yankees have scored 4.4 What have you done for me lately? Yeah, not that. That's the thing. I mean, you look. It, it feels like if a team gets to to five runs, the Yankees can't. That's win. what I'm saying. And the Rangers could put up five to seven in a blink of an eye. Uh, you know, with they they hit a lot of home runs. They they hit for average four runs even. They're they're, they're four runs is like because you, they got to score five to win. It's like they're not scoring five. So you've got to hold a team to three for the Yankees to win. And this is going to be a big series for the bullpen and looking to see how they, cause you know, Schmidt's going five innings, maybe Severino's going five innings, maybe. And you're hoping that Cole can manage the pitch count and, and get you, you know, into the seventh inning. But for a team like this, it wouldn't surprise me if he's, if his pitch count is, uh, is high, you know, in the, in the sixth, in the sixth inning. And, and you're looking at the seventh inning as being, um, as being a little extra gravy for him, but this bullpen's going to have to be on and, we're going to be square looking at who, how they're managing it, who's coming in in particular moments, because uh, you look at the fifth inning in the, in the Severino and the Schmidt start, someone, someone's going to have to be up, and there's going to be three to four guys coming in to effectively pitch against this very good offensive team. It's 3.4 runs per game for the Yankees in June, so a full run worse than on the season. And, well, the good news is Monday is off, so the extra off day. So, you know, Boone should have no problem managing the bullpen this weekend. Schmidt, Severino, then Cole. So Cole being uh, the the back end of this. Um, so yeah, empty the empty the tank on the bullpen essentially for the first two games. If if you're if you're in the game, right? Like because you're looking at Cole, especially because none of them pitched yesterday. None of them pitched Thursday yeah. in the bullpen. And you're looking at Cole in the so back. Call end. that an off day for all the big guys. Cole on the back end. Monday off on uh, Monday yeah. off. So yeah, Friday Saturday. Assuming the game is close, you empty. You do your what big you need to do to win the game. Yeah. 
and then you you mm-hmm. you rely on your 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 uh, your horse yep, with to Cole. go seven. You rely on Cole to go seven. Yeah, yeah, that's the game plan. That's how I would manage. That's the game plan. We'll see if it happens. We'll see if it happens. Um, today's Friday, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, big weekend set here. We will uh, we will talk to you again on Monday, and we'll see how close Aaron Boone manages the game uh, to the common sense department.